How's it going guys? Today I'm going to show you how to get those extremely tight miters and the trick is right here. So stay tuned if you want to learn how. So for this project you'll just need a sheet of plywood that's two feet by four feet roughly and about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to start by cutting the base and that's going to be 20 inches by 24. So now that I have my base cut, I can go ahead and start working on my runners. I used to make these out of wood, but the only problem with that is wood's gonna expand and contract. So sometimes you'd have a nice easy sliding sled, and other times the sled's gonna be like wedged in there and you can barely move it. So one way to avoid that is by using some type of plastic runner. Now I was sent these by Microjig quite a while back, but uh, it's called their zero play system and I've tested them out in the past couple days and they've seemed to work out extremely well. So I'm going to go ahead and try it on this miter sled and uh, see how they turn out. So first things first, you're going to want to make sure your track is nice and clean. Next I'm going to take some nickels, I'm going to set them down in there. Now what this is going to do is it's going to prop my insert up and this insert has a cool wedge design on it. So when it's pulled all the way back, it's going to be at its narrowest and it's going to slide in super easy. And then as you push it forward, it's going to expand outwards. So then it's going to get fatter and now it won't even fit in the track. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and drop this in place. And that's just going to allow it to be propped up a little bit and making sure you're actually hitting the top of the track where it's going to be when it's in use. So you want to start out by having the insert pulled fully back so it's at its narrowest position. Then I want to gently push each end until I feel just a little bit of resistance and it doesn't take much. That's it right there. Then I want to lock it in place by tightening down the three set screws. And now if you did it right, there should be no side to side play, but it should go back and forth nice and easy. So now you have a couple of options. You can either do another track on the other side, or you can do two tracks on one side, which is what I'm gonna do. Since my base is so long, I think that's my best option. And the great thing about these are, you can attach it from top down, so you don't have to try going underneath it. And for that, you just wanna go over to your drill press, and we'll drill some holes out, and we'll attach the board to the runner. So unfortunately, my drill press can't reach that deep, so I'm just gonna have to do it by hand. I went ahead and took a half inch Forstner bit, marked it with a piece of tape on how deep I want to go, and then I'm going to finish the hole by going all the way through with a 3 16 inch drill bit. And with all my holes drilled, I can go ahead and set this on top of the runners, screw them in place, and I should have a nice sliding board. So I can go ahead and set my base piece to the side right now. I want to start working on the fence. And for that, I'm going to laminate a couple of pieces of three quarter inch plywood together. So I'm going to oversize cut them on the first time. Then after the glue dries, I'll trim them down to their final dimensions. So now I'm going to go ahead and take two pieces and just glue them together so I have a little bit of a thicker fence. So I went ahead and let these dry for an hour or two and now I'm going to go ahead and trim them down to their final dimensions. And now that I have my fences trimmed down to about two and a half inches, I want to go ahead and run my baseboard through here about halfway through and that's going to give me a reference point to put my fences at. So 
So now that I have a reference point as to where my saw blade is going to be cutting, I went ahead and took a speed square and lined up this edge with the saw blade edge just because I'm not sure this and that may not be a perfect 90. So I got it lined up now. The glue bottle is just weighing the speed square down so it doesn't move. And I can go ahead and take some glue, put it on the bottom of my fence here. And it doesn't have to be a lot because it's just temporary. And now I'm going to go ahead and line up my board so it matches my 45 degree angle. And that looks good to me. So I'm gonna let this tack up for a little bit and then I'll secure it in from the bottom with some screws. So it's been about an hour and this is glued in place. I should be able to flip it over and secure it from the bottom side. Now I did forget to uh, cut this roughly to the dimension that I want. So I gotta figure out a way to cut off the excess here, but that's really no big deal. And make sure that you don't add glue anywhere near the front here. Otherwise, when you go to cut off the extra, it's gonna be glued down on your table. So just make sure you give yourself plenty of room. You don't need a whole lot of glue because ultimately it's gonna be secured with the screws anyway. So just go easy on the glue and uh, let's go ahead and flip it over and secure this fence in place. So now one side of my fence is done, I just need to go ahead and do the other. And I'll start by taking that piece, setting it on here and cutting off a 45 degree section. So now I wanna do a similar thing for the other side. I'm gonna take some glue and tack it in place and then flip it over and secure it. But when I do this side, I wanna line it up Make sure that these are completely 90 to each other. So even if there is a little bit of deviation with this first side, the second side is gonna make up for that and it's gonna be exactly 90 degrees. So I'll just temporarily glue it in place and then I'll screw it in from the bottom to secure it. And just so I don't forget, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the back side of it so I don't really have that much hanging off. like I did for the other side, I want to go ahead and take this, set it in place, and trim off the excess. And now that I have both sides cut, I just want to double check and make sure my angle is still good. And if it is out a little bit, you can take a piece of masking tape and shim off whatever side's out. And it should bring it back in because it's probably not going to be that much. And the last thing I want to do is take one of my extra pieces of fence, cut a 45 on it, and then I'll put it down the middle and this will act as a blade guard. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did for the fences. I'm gonna glue it in place, then secure it from the bottom. Now the last thing I did was I marked one fence A and the other fence B and this just ensures that I always have an A side and a B side coming together and those two 45s are going to make a perfect 90. And the reason I did this was just in case one of my fences are slightly off, it's going to be compensated for by the other fence. So if I join two B sides or two A sides, it might be slightly off, but if I always join an A and a B, it's always going to give me that perfect 90.
And the last thing I want to do is go ahead and take a speed square, butt these two ones together, and that looks like a perfect 90 if you ask me, and there's no gaps anywhere along this joint, so I'd say that's a success. So that wraps it up for the miter slide video. Hopefully you guys found this helpful and if you have any questions, as always, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. If you guys like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more woodworking videos. I'll see you guys next Tuesday.